Good morning, folks. We've got the first of the 2020 special videos upcoming tonight, how the sun's climate forcing actually works. But this morning, we've got weather and top science news, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last day on the sun was quiet once again. We are still watching the sunspots at high latitude pop up in the transition period here between solar cycles. And the solar wind is variable this morning, but look at the left on the scale. Plasma speed is below 400 kilometers per second, so we are bouncing between quiet and very quiet. Geomagnetic conditions confirm geospace is calm. As I mentioned, we are indeed at the precipice of solar cycle 25. As sunspots begin to appear at high latitude and with reversed polarity, I am starting to see all the solar physics blogs talking about the shift. New year, new decade, new sunspot cycle, just waiting for the official call. So let's go to Himawari once again, checking in on the Australia bushfires. CIRA fire detection on the satellite here. Situation is looking horrendous, and remember, we're just looking from the satellite. It can also easily show the differentiation between the smoke and the white water vapor clouds. Well, folks, after Anchorage set its own hot record to end 2019, it managed a record snowfall yesterday. That is quite the swing. And we're getting more from Jakarta, Indonesia, where the death toll has risen to nine in their record flood event there in the city. It's extreme weather worldwide. Let's go to the science and space weather quarterly is free to read and linked below. The four times a year space weather magazine is a great way to dive into the space weather risks that will be surging back to life when indeed the solar cycle 25 kicks in a bit more. Folks, we see small CMEs even during sunspot minimum, but they're nothing like sunspot maximum. These you're seeing here are fairly common during that period. And folks, the last two sunspot cycles offered CMEs that would have taken out global power and possibly melted the global grids if they had hit us. Will we get lucky again this cycle? And there's more to space weather too, obviously. And the move to understand the weather effects of solar blasts is surging. I went ahead and included two other free-to-read solar climate forcing papers from this last year, which gives you three total today with the Space Weather Quarterly magazine, and there's a very good reason to reacquaint oneself with these materials before tonight, but we'll come back to that in a second. We're quickly jumping to the APS, where numerous forms of dark matter were excluded from possibility due to a re-examination of the xenon collaboration data from the last two years. They were, of course, hoping to find a magic new particle, but instead are cutting down the hiding places so quickly, wouldn't be surprised if they're worrying about how many are left, and they should be. Up next, we're looking at the recurrent nova of the cosmos, and it's a great piece here summarizing a good bit of the field, including the fact that all nova are likely recurrent, and many more stars nova than we realize. While rapid recurrent nova are the confirmed cases, those are the ones that have novaed more than once in our short technological viewing period. They say that most will have hundreds to thousands of years nova cycles or more. Most we haven't seen go boom once, and once they do, we won't know officially that they are recurring for hundreds to thousands of years more. This is critical because, folks, the sun has numerous indications that it is an extremely long period recurrent micronova star. This potential gets amplified when you consider galactic electromagnetic interactions, and indeed that's what the majority of our special videos were about in December that, and the fallout here on Earth. For more on that, you can watch the Cosmic Disaster movie, linked below this video, and on our homepage. But tonight, we will be delivering more on the climate. While it is finally making the rounds that something is changing in climate science, most don't know what. If they've heard about solar particle forcing, they don't know what that means. And even for many of you here, who hear the words and see the papers here every week, the question still remains, how are these statistical correlations and sometimes obvious temporal forcings accomplished? What is the mechanism and how does this differ from the last 40 years of climate science? That's coming tonight. The key mechanisms will take less than 10 minutes to describe and I would love to see you back here in a few hours. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close and of course we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.